Emergency equipment is the most important thing to consider when planning a cross-country flight. At least that's what my flight instructor told me about a million times. Bring food and water, the short English bloke would say. So I did. Or my mom made me, I should say. If the 150 Cessna was any bigger, she would have insisted I bring a tent. My mom had packed me enough provisions for a two-week safari. That's the kind of things mothers do when they worry. I'd been looking forward to this trip for a long time. Ever since I started flying, I couldn't wait till the day when I accomplished my solo cross-country flight. It's one of the requirements a student pilot has to accomplish before receiving his private pilot's license. I wanted to make sure everything was just perfect, so I picked Ambicelli as my first stop and Magadi as my second. Why did I pick these destinations for stopping points for the flight, you might ask? Well, first of all, Ambicelli is a national state park here in Kenya, Africa, and is located at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. At 19,430 feet, this is the largest mountain in East Africa, therefore an easy target to point my airplane towards. Secondly, Magadi is located on a peninsula that extends into Lake Magadi, another easy target to locate, so therefore I can't miss. Two obvious landmarks to spot from the air. With this in mind, I arrived at Wilson Airport around 8 in the morning. By 10 o'clock, I had filed my flight plan, completed the groundwork, packed the airplane, and finished my pre-flight. I started the engine. I made my call to taxi. Wilson Brown, Cessna 5, Yankee Alpha Zulu Whiskey, ready to taxi, departure to the west. It was 12 by the time I was rolling down the runway after handing in my departure papers to customs. It is important to give them your departure and arrival information to let them know that you have left and arrived safely. One must do this or they start a search and rescue operation. I climbed to the downwind leg of the runway and made my departure call. Nairobi approach, this is Cessna 5 Yankee Alpha Zulu Whiskey, one mile west of Wilson southbound, 6,500 feet, request permission to transition through airspace Bravo. Cessna 5 Yankee Alpha Zulu Whiskey, Nairobi approach, squad 7666. Roger that, Nairobi approach, Cessna Alpha Zulu Whiskey, squawking 7666. Cessna Alpha Zulu Whiskey, Radar contact two miles west at Wilson, 6,500, clear through the Bravo airspace. I put the microphone down but decided to monitor Nairobi Center just for safety and hear a familiar voice. I was on a southeastern heading of 115 degrees, altitude of 500 feet AGL. This kept me well below the jumbos that were landing at Jomo Kenyatta Airport just outside of Nairobi. Trying to fly an airplane, read a flight chart, keep on a straight track, watch for other airplanes and stay at 500 feet AGL without flying into the nearest hill is not an easy task. I imagine flying a 747 at 35,000 feet would be less complicated. Being so close to the ground, I was experiencing some turbulence. This is the most common thing that turns people away from flying. The strange sensation of being tossed around and having no control can be nerve-wracking to some people. But for some reason, it had never bothered me. Guess I'm lucky. A few months earlier, I had the opportunity to sail up and down the Kenyan coast with some friends. When it was time for the captain to hand out duties, he was pleased to find out that I didn't get motion sickness. You see, the gallery of the 60-foot sailing vessel was in the bow. That's the section that moves up and down the most as the boat crashes over massive, unforgiving waves. So I was picked as the crew chef because I was the only one who could endure the galley long enough to cook a meal without blowing chunks. Lucky me, huh? Should have kept my big mouth shut. It turned out for the best. You see, I didn't know anything about sailing boats, so the captain figured it was the best place for me, for the safety of the crew and all. Anyway, the bumpy ride in the airplane didn't faze me one bit. I loved a good roller coaster ride. I was well out of the Kenyan airspace, so started to climb. I pushed the throttle full forward and gave the airplane a nose up attitude. I know it sounds like I'm talking about a very conceited person when I mention a nose up attitude. I'm referring to pulling back on the yoke and pointing the plane's nose to the sky. When I reached flight level 7500, I leveled off. I noticed the ride was much smoother up here. I soon started to relax and gather my thoughts. 
Then the thought hit me from out of the blue. I was flying. This was a lifelong dream since childhood. To be able to get an airplane off the ground, fly around, and land all alone. I was not only flying, but flying in Kenya. This was a country that most people dream about or see on some National Geographic special. Many people have paid large amounts of money to see what I have seen. This was a beautiful country. I would soon be flying to Lake Magadi, which is located in the Great Rift Valley. This valley is a large gap in the Earth's surface that slices Kenya in two. It runs north and south and is thousands of miles long, starting in Egypt and ending in Tanzania. It's 20 miles wide and 500 to 1,000 feet deep in some areas. The Rift Valley consists of many lakes, volcanoes, and feeding grounds for animals as well as rivers. With the many airstrips on the valley floor, it's a pilot's dream come true. I couldn't believe that I was really here. Perhaps I should write a book someday. Nah, probably need to work on my grammar and spelling. I took a quick look at the instruments to check my progress. Altitude 7,500, airspeed 95 knots, engines pressures and temperatures in the green, and heading still 115 degrees. I surveyed the landscape below to get a fix on my position. Strange, I had been flying for an hour and 10 minutes. The mighty Mount Kilimanjaro should have been in sight by now. Something's not right, I muttered to myself. By my calculations, I should be right over it by now. Or if I was where I should be, I should have crashed into it. I checked in all directions, even behind me in case I might have passed it while daydreaming. I saw nothing. I got a bad feeling about this, I said out loud. I picked up the flight log from the seat next to me and rechecked my flight plan.